Hello fellow audio nerds, I'm Steph and this is Major Hi-Fi. So I hadn't really heard much about AAWIEMs, but this week when these ones appeared on my review desk, um, I was really blown away by the beautiful shells, um, absolutely gorgeous. But the big question that I had was, okay, these look really nice, but do they sound as good as they look? Well, let's go back in time. I'll share with you my first impressions and then I'll meet you right back here for my overall thoughts. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to my place today. I've got with me the AAW Ash, so let's see what's inside the box here. All right, so as you'll see here, um, we've got some nice accessories. Uh, first things first is this really nice, um, I really like this case a lot. It's sort of like this soft leather kind of material, but it's got this blue color, obviously. Um, it zips up and you can, you know, keep your, your earphones in there. Next, we've got a plethora of ear tips here. There's just regular silicone tips and some foam tips here. Uh, we've got the three and a half millimeter to 6.35 millimeter adapter, an airplane adapter, uh, this beautiful cable uh, that, yeah, I'm excited to tell you all about this cable, um, a nice kind of, uh, you know, microfiber cleaning cloth, and then of course the earphones themselves, and oh my gosh, these things are gorgeous. Um, it's sort of got this like crimson with gold finish on there um, and it's it's absolutely gorgeous these are some of the best looking earphones uh, in my opinion that I've seen so let's get into the design of these because they're absolutely beautiful in my opinion um, you'll notice this crimson and gold on the front of the of the driver housing the back is actually sort of this translucent sort of like gray color uh, and really if you take a close look at it you can see um, kind of the the things that are inside, the drivers, uh, circuitry and stuff in there, the crossovers. So yeah, kind of an interesting look to them for sure. And then additionally, if I take off the ear tip here, you'll see this is a stainless steel nozzle. Um, and that's a, it's got a three bore design in there um, to sort of like send the sound out. But it's kind of interesting because, you know, when I first was looking at these, um, my first, one of my first thoughts was like, oh boy, there's no way these are gonna fit in my ears because they have kind of a large, uh, a large driver housing. So I'm very curious about it. Let's see how they, how they do fit. I do have the, uh, the foam tips on here, so we'll see if that kind of helps at all. Wow, I'm, I'm super impressed. I don't know why these fit so easily, but they really, really do. <laughs> um, yeah, like super easy to get into the ear. I don't know if it looks like it's poking out at all um, over there, but like I have a, whoa, <laughs> I have a really good seal. Uh, and also they're super sound isolating, especially with these foam tips. I guess the way the cable really hugs tight here kind of helps it stay in place, but also like the driver housing itself, you'll see how it sort of like starts to come out. It really do isn't touching my ear at all. Um, so in addition to like, fitting really easily. It's also, um, yeah, really comfortable too. Like it doesn't even really feel like I'm wearing anything, which is very surprising if you, by just looking at these. <laughs> Interesting. But let's talk about this cable a little bit because it is a really special and good looking cable for sure. Um, so this is made by Null Audio. It's their symf symphonim uh, Tiberon cable. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce all of that, but um, yeah, it's one of their cables. Um, it looks great, super well made, super durable. I love these connectors, and there's just this like sense of attention to detail uh, in these connectors that really makes me kind of have this like faith in it. I don't know how to explain that, um, but everything feels really well made. This cable does attach to the earphones via two pin connector. Um, so if you did want to end up swapping out cables at any point, it's a two pin. Um, but yeah, the cable is a, is what they call a UPOCC cable. Um, it kind of stands, it stands for ultra pure Ono, uh, continuous casting cable. Uh, 
It's got four cross braided wires in there and uses uh, the thing that's kind of special about it is that it uses this special staggered um, layout method and basically uh, it helps it's supposed to help create like a better sense of separation because like there's individually insulated strands of normal copper and then like denser um, so anyway it's really interesting and there's not like you know, I don't really know exactly how, how it works, but I am interested to see kind of how it ends up sounding as a result. And I'm super excited to take a listen to these. Um, some colleagues of mine have already tried them out and I have yet to do so. So I'm really excited to hear them. Um, but before I do, I just wanna talk quickly about the driver situation. So as I mentioned, if you look, uh, I don't know if it comes through on the camera, but if you look in there um, through the translucent parts, you can see the drivers. Um, there's quite a few of them. Uh, there's seven drivers in total actually. Um, and one of them is a 13 millimeter graphene um, dynamic driver, and then there are six balanced armature drivers. Um, but the thing that's kind of interesting about the way the crossover is with this, um, first of all, it uses a special crossover called True Cross, um, and it basically uh, helps with phase alignment, which sometimes can be an issue with like hybrid driver systems. But <clears throat> the thing that's interesting to me is that the dynamic driver is actually used for the lows, the low mids, and the middle mids. Um, so it's really actually taking on um, much more frequent, um, a much much wider frequency range than other hybrid IEMs that I've seen. Usually, I just see the dynamic driver taking over for the um, the low frequencies. But uh, but yeah, this one's different. The balanced armatures. Then there's. Um, two dedicated for the high mids and the highs, and then four dedicated for the ultra highs. So it's a really kind of interesting um, way that they kind of set up the crossover uh, frequencies for these. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to hear them because I think it's gonna be kind of interesting. All right, so let's take a listen to these. All right, yeah, I was just listening to the song I'm Calling by Tennis. And I like the low end. It's got this sense of like naturalism, a natural, <laughs> naturalism, <laughs> uh, realism, and naturalness to it. Um, that makes it kind of sound like you know it's it's kind of an even low end. Um, but it feels really good. It's not overly emphasized for sure. But the kick drum in the song um, has a sense, of, a little bit of a sense of subbiness to it, a good sense of extension. Uh, but it's not like overly boosted or kind of you know, over-exaggerated in any way. All right, um, yeah, I was just listening to the song uh, Jackie and Wilson by Hosier, and I'm actually not psyched as much on these for this genre, uh, so I'm gonna listen to something else, but I just wanna say why real quick. Um, but first off, like, the bass guitar in the song sounds really full, um, has really great separation. Um, the reason I'm not as psyched on these for this uh, particular genre is that there's sort of like this leaning um, toward the high mids and it basically like the guitars kind of feel like more emphasized in that like distortion area, which is cool, but it just feels a little bit less thick and a little bit less like uh, it does sound harmonically complex, and I'll give it that for sure, um, but I like this kind of genre, the rock kind of indie stuff to have a little bit more emphasis in like the middle part of the mid-range as opposed to like so much on the high mids. Uh, and it affects the way the vocal sounds too. The vocal is kind of emphasized up in the high mids like that. Um, but let me try switching to a different genre. Ah, okay. I'm realizing what these earphones are really good at. Okay, so I was just listening to a Brahms song. It's, uh, what is this, Symphony Number no. 1 in C minor. Um, but yeah, basically that sort of like high mid emphasis um, but also has though like really good separation. And in this song, there's like a lot of strings going on that kind of feel really, really detailed and sound gorgeous actually. Like has a sense of aesthetically pleasingness to it that um, both is like has character but also feels realistic at the same time it's kind of hard to explain but yeah the harmonic complexity makes it feel like 
it's realistic and it has kind of a fullness uh, and a naturalness to it but at the same time it yeah it it just like i don't know there's kind of a sweetness in those uh, in the top of that mid-range that makes those violins really shine through in a beautiful way it also is really really good at um kind of capturing the complexity of of those dynamic changes as well with this genre. Um, it sounds really nice and it feels, it feels very controlled. Like it doesn't feel like overly dancey or like overly, like it has too much movement, um, but it just, it handles it really flawlessly actually. Um, I guess to me, I think that might be coming from this cable. It's really nice. Okay, yeah, I was just listening to the song Miles Runs the Voodoo Down by Miles Davis. Um, and yeah, actually when I first put the earphones in while listening to the song, I noticed right away that the tape hiss sounded a little bit louder in the mix than usual. Um, there's definitely like some emphasis in the high frequencies and as a result, like kind of the entire mix had this sense of air over top it that sounded gorgeous. Um, and made the cymbals sound really, really pretty too. And they did feel a bit louder in the mix, but it didn't really feel out of place. Like somehow, even though it was louder, there was still like this sense of separation from like other important uh, frequency, uh, parts of the frequency response. So it didn't feel like unbalanced. Um, it just kind of felt a little bit, a little bit louder, a little bit closer, um, but it didn't like take up more space, if that makes sense. Wow, yeah, I really like the soundstage. Um, so I was just listening to the song My Honey and Me by The Emotions. And the thing that's kind of like, was immediately noticeable is that the sense of width is really well done with these earphones. So for example, in the song, there's sort of this hi-hat off to the right. Um, and then there's this Rhodes that's sort of off to the left, but it's not, I don't, I don't think it's completely um, like panned wide. I think it's like off center a little bit and, um, or off, <laughs> off that wall a little bit. Um, but this contrast between the two just um, was really, really well done. It felt like there was so much space there and it just had that little bit of nuance to bring it um, right to where it felt um, very specific in space, uh, that Rhodes. And likewise, um, the sense of height, I mean, kind of how I mentioned with the nice sense of low frequency extension and the high frequency extension, this made it really nice and, and uh, a lot of contrast between those things. You know, the symbols, the vocal um, definitely has a sense of brightness to it, uh, which is interesting because this is usually a really kind of mid-range heavy mix. Um, so that's actually worth considering because if you do like um, songs that have brighter vocals, these are going to be a little bit too intense in the high frequencies for you. And then additionally, um, as for the soundstage, the sense of depth was there as well. Um, and I could really hear the room mics uh, of the drums. Uh, it did feel a little bit skewed though because of, I think, the way the mid-range is kind of sitting with that all that high mid energy. Um, just kind of made things feel closer in space like usually the vocal in this song sits a little bit further back But because of the way it was sort of shaped um, it felt much more like close than usual so I definitely am gonna keep listening and uh, Throughout the week and sort of yeah get back to you with my overall thoughts back at the major hi-fi office All right, I will see you there overall the low frequencies of the AAW ash have a nice sense of naturalness to them. They feel deep and they feel full, but they really are not overly emphasized. And as a result, they work super well for genres that need more of an even low frequency response. Things like classical music, things like jazz. As for the mid-range of the ash, um, the low mids and the middle part of the mid-range feel even. They feel full, actually, and they have a sense of harmonic complexity to them for sure. However, the high mids definitely have some emphasis, and as a result, instruments that are mid-range rich, like an electric guitar, for example, leans toward the high mids, and so this might bring that electric guitar to lean more towards the crunchiness of the distortion, for example. It brings also forward sort of the attacks of things, so the attack of a snare drum, the attack of piano keys kind of comes forward a little bit in the mix. And this forwardness also affects the way vocals sit as well. Vocals tend to sit a little bit closer to you in the mix, and they also sound 
uh, louder in the mix in general. Now the high frequencies definitely have a sense of emphasis and I hear it mostly in the lower treble and in the upper octave. Now the lower treble emphasis is a bit intense sometimes and actually for this reason I don't recommend uh, these earphones for vocal centric music. I think that it sort of can come across as a little bit harsh there. It's a little bit abrasive um, for those types of bright vocals. However, for darker recordings, kind of older recordings done to tape that weren't over, uh, compensated for in like with um, EQ moves, you know, though for those recordings, actually these earphones really bring the, that music to life. Um, so if you do have older, darker recordings that are vocal centric, these are going to be a great option. However, where I thought the high frequencies did really uh, an interesting job and a really good job is in classical music, for example, even though there's sort of this dip where, you know, the... Um, the, low, uh, the lower treble is emphasized and the upper octave is emphasized, even though it um, creates a little bit of like, you know, un unrealistic, uh, an unrealistic shape. Um, it's very aesthetically pleasing and it really does a good job of bringing out the character and symbols and the character of strings. Like it's still harmonically complex even though it has a different shape. Lastly, as for the soundstage of the Ash, I think that it's actually really interesting. You know, there's a sense of separation that I felt in the mid-range, in the high frequencies, which is why I thought it sounded really nice for classical and jazz music. Um, and you know, that sense of separation also really affects the sense of depth. I think that the depth comes through in a really interesting way. It's not overstated at all. Um, I think it actually feels really musical. Um, and its realness is skewed a little bit, you know, the high mids being pushed forward in a sense kind of bring things closer in space to you. Um, so I think it's sort of, an, it feels like an aesthetic choice in a way to sort of bring those things closer to you. The sense of width is certainly there. There's a strong sense of phantom center. The extension in the low frequencies and the and the extension in the high frequencies give it a nice sense of height as well. Overall, the AAW Ash is gonna be a great option for those of you who really enjoy classical music and jazz music or darker recordings, things that need a little bit of livening up and things that need a sense of evenness and harmonic complexity, but don't mind sort of a boosted mid-range that sort of has a nice separation, but just brings things a bit forward. Um, it's going to be a really good option for you. I also was super impressed with how well these fit despite the fact that the driver housings are pretty large. Thank you so much for watching. For another perspective on the AAW Ash, be sure to check out the link in the description box down below. I've left a link there to my colleague's review. Uh, but yeah, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. All right, I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.